Jay Paul uses experiments to understand what works or not in the fight against poverty. And we now have about 1,800 evaluations around the world. You can see how this has grown from 100 uh, 20 years ago to about 1,800 now. And we do this in just about every sector from agriculture, health, education. In fact, 10 years ago, 15 years ago when I was starting and helping launch the governance initiative, people would ask me, uh, you know, and we were talking about issues like democracy, strengthening democracy, uh, identifying corruption, reducing corruption. And people would tell me, but Iqbal, what is, how are you going to have an RCT test something which is illegal like corruption? Or how are you going to test RCTs, uh, use RCTs to test whether democracies are strengthening or not? And kind of, I think the fun part of this journey has been discovering how experiments can be applied there. And so really our hope is that the same thing would happen to development programs which have AI built into that. And I don't actually have to go into the future. The future is now. So let me take you through a few examples of how this is happening. So there are kind of five work streams in which we see AI working pretty well. Bridget already mentioned a few of them, so I can actually go faster on those. So the first thing is on improving program targeting and needs prediction. So a lot of the work that Jaypal does under the social protection area is around these work, uh, workfare programs, for instance, uh, where the current model is keep the prices, the wages so low that people kind of self-target themselves into these programs. This leads to excess demand, uh, and I think this is where the role of AI can be to find what are the various alternatives to better identify uh, the most, uh, those people who are most likely to benefit from these, targeted, uh, these programs versus others. So uh, Bruno Crepon, uh, who's, who's here and who's the uh, co-chair of our labor market program along with Marianne Bertrand, uh, are already working on something like this in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, and the hope is to be able to compare the impact on the participants' employment, earning skills, and behavior um, versus the status quo. Uh, in terms of the broad, you know, going beyond this program, I think where this is really useful uh, is that limited dollars can be spent better. Again, something that you heard earlier, uh, and the people most qualified for the program can actually participate. Another cool thing here is about needs prediction. So for instance, Give Directly is thinking about how to get cash in the hands of people who are most likely to be affected by an oncoming flood or a cyclone, even before the flood or cyclone has happened. Uh, and the, you know, our ability to you know, uh, experiment and evaluate these programs would be great. And then, of course, on the concern side, we're really worried that uh, you know, if the algorithm has biases or the algorithm gets it wrong, then it could magnify uh, the mistakes that are being made. Okay, so the, the, the second area is just about increasing the access to services. So this is, this is, this is one that, again, uh, Bridget highlighted very nicely with an example of extension workers where you know, pest and disease control, for instance, is very important. This is, again, a work by one of our affiliates, Teresa. Uh, and here, the farmers in this particular program, what the AI is helping us do is that the farmers simply upload photos of crops via phones to receive disease diagnosis and treatment rather than getting into these elaborate phone calls with extension workers about, you know, like, is the leaf red or is it brown or, you know, like, is the whole two millimeters or three millimeters kind of the AI helps them really accelerate this. Uh, so, so the hope of this is that it widens the access and reduces the barriers to program and also because it is now far easier to iterate on modifications and on scale, uh, and which I think is kind of a really, really important point. Uh, it can also cause harm if AI provides faulty or untrue information, uh, but otherwise a great potential. Uh, the third is uh, the third sort of way that AI is being integrated into development programs is to maximize the impact of the programs itself. So for instance, in India, in Tamil Nadu, this is a progr uh, program which is being evaluated by Esther Duflo. Uh, they are essentially, uh, the program, what it tries to do is go to people who don't have great uh, health care and say, can we bring them in for screening? But right now, uh, and this is screening for non-communicable diseases like heart diseases and so forth, uh, currently, that requires you to tra you know, travel to a local hospital, get into these massive ECG or X-ray uh, um, uh, in front of X-ray machines to get this done. So you can, as you can imagine, access is very limited. What Esther and Frank are trying to do is to say, are there some lower cost anthropometric sort of tests which can get you to almost the same or equally good outcomes as these expensive uh, tests are and thereby greatly increase the impact of this program besides its reach itself. 
Um, again, you know, it's got great potential, but it also has this risk, uh, which you heard David and Gita talk about earlier, about displacing workers and about privacy. Uh, the fourth a strand of work where Jaypal researchers are working on experiments is about uh, exactly the issue that uh, Gita highlighted earlier as one of the risks and how do you reduce the bias and ensure fairness in the program. So for instance, there's tons of evidence that there is unconscious bias that happens in hiring, in promotion decisions, uh, and so if the, if the model is trained uh, on data which itself has these biases, then are you going to end up having a really, really uh, problematic uh, sort of a situation? The fifth and the last uh, uh, area where we are really excited for experiments in development and beyond in social policy is boosting government capacity and its effectiveness itself. Uh, so one example here is the work which is done by folks like Ben Olken and Adnan, uh, which is about boosting tax revenues, not by, you know, current model is that the tax inspector decides which particular um, ho um, establishments to kind of audit more closely or to inspect, or for property taxes, which houses should be uh, subject to an audit. And now can computer vision algorithm use images of properties to decide whether the property taxes are meaningful or not? And obviously, if you can generate far more resources for development uh, uh, programs, that would be a huge win for everybody. Um, and so uh, again, this requires accessing administrative data and using it in creative ways, uh, but also uh, concerns about privacy and surveillance. Okay, so besides these uh, kind of, I just wanted to take you quickly through how the actually the entire life cycle of an experiment itself, uh, there's huge potential for AI to have a positive impact on that. So the first is on the, you know, like the first thing that researchers do is on the problem identification and hypothesis generation. I think uh, we are seeing creative uses of AI to conduct literature reviews, generate hypotheses, and, uh, but it also means I was talking earlier to Bridget and David, you know, uh, what happens when you evaluate a program which, is, uh, which uses a, a technology which in 12 months is going to be obsolete and the results, how do you ex make sure that the results are meaningful because they're talking much more about that, evaluating that technology versus the learnings from it decoding the black box. Uh, in terms of the actual research on field, really exciting stuff happening in terms of generating field surveys using ID, um, uh, AI, providing instantaneous translations, uh, analyzing data much more quickly in real time, which also means that you can probably write these papers a little faster. Uh, you could translate scientific articles into policy memos very earlier. Um, I know a, lot, a bunch of you uh, j Pallers do that. I know you're very excited about that. Uh, I don't know why you're not worried about that, <laughs> given, given what <laughs> David said earlier. Uh, but, because if I was you, I would be more worried than excited about it. So every time people come to my office and say, hey, hey Bal, can we try this thing for AI in our jobs? I'm like, okay, then, like, uh, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, and, and then uh, similarly, I think advising how to tweak and scale in, uh, interventions it would be a really great way to do this. You know, think about this, right? Like, we, uh, a, a lot of the time that, um, but anyway, let me skip over this because I have only 55 seconds left. Uh, but, uh, but this is just last night. Uh, before I went to sleep, I was going through my Twitter feed and I forwarded this to Jared to put it in my slide. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a professor who just put, it, uh, put his, uh, this tweet up in saying, in academia, Gen I will reduce the need for RAs. Uh, I used to describe what kind of graphs I want to see, ask RAs to tinker with details and show me when ready, took hours. Uh, well, he really has incredible hours, I must say, and he's still uh, complaining about the hours. Uh, now, Chad GPT can do it in 10 minutes for a few cents. So, uh, so I, think, uh, I think for me what it meant, showed was that it's not just uh, the jobs we thought traditionally go away, but this has implications for kind of all of us. I think uh, what really, uh, for a lot of us who have been in development, we have been through these silver bullets long time. There, there was a time when we all thought microfinance would be the solution for all the problems. Uh, there was another time when we thought every kid in school must get a free laptop. We know where that went. Uh, uh, there was a time when community participation would trump everything was the mantra. Every single program needed uh, community participation element in it. Uh, and then similarly, for those who are aware of the cook stove studies, there were billions and billions dollars poured into cook stoves 
because they would you know, get both for women empowerment and climate, and we know how that went. So I think the field of development economics is littered with silver bullets, and I think the question is, is AI going to be a silver bullet or a dud? Uh, and if you have to ask me my personal opinion, I think it's exactly what Bridget said, that I think AI is going to be a tool, and whether it becomes a tool for the good, bad, or even has a meaningful significance uh, is all in our hands. Um, so thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.